Hey guys, it's Lotus and welcome back to another video. Today, as part of Spooky Month, we're going to check out uh, uh, some scary urban legends. Uh, specifically, uh, this Japanese uh, urban legend called the Akamanto, aka the Red Cloak. Um, so before we get into it, just want to say uh, my Black Kitty Cinders will be joining us for the week, uh, for the month of October as part of Spooky Month. And, uh, yes, everyone say hi. <laughs> he's so cute. Um, yeah, so he's a little derpy, but I love him so much. Anyway, um, so without further ado, let's check out, uh, let's check out and learn more about the, uh, urban legend Akamanto. So actually, before I get into it, I actually heard this story from word of mouth, um, years and years ago. Um, uh, one of my friends had told it to me, uh, while we were at lunch. And she was just like going through a bunch of different like Japanese horror stories that she was familiar with. Uh, one being um, the the woman with the split smile. That one's also really, really scary. Um, I might cover that in the future. Uh, and then she also mentioned the Akamanto. It's the red and blue toilet paper ghost. Pretty much, um, let's just say this, uh, from what I remember before I read, uh, read, uh, the story here, from what I remember, um, this ghost haunts, like, public school bathrooms, like, the ones with, like, the many stalls. And if you're unlucky to encounter them, they'll ask you if you want a red or blue toilet paper. And, like, either choice that you choose will end up you being murdered by the ghost. And so, after hearing that story, I was absolutely terrified of going to the school bathroom by myself. Like... I was, I had to go, I could not go by myself, I had to go with a friend or a classmate because I was not going to risk it. Um, between the Akamanto story and then also uh, uh, watching, do you, I don't know if, you, if any of you have seen um, in the Silent Hill, the first Silent Hill movie, there was a scene where there was like a, a the, the, jet, the dead janitor in the school building, he was in the last bathroom stall and when the main character lady opened the stall, it was just like this gruesome corpse of the janitor and then he just came out of the came out of the stall and started chasing her like uh, like crawling after her and that scared me so between that and the akamanto uh bathroom story i was too scared to go to the bathroom by myself um i would have to always wait until the bath there was other people in the bathroom before i used it or if there was no one else i would use the bathroom as quickly as possible, not look at the mirror, and then wash my hands quickly and leave. Like, I would I would not stick around to test fate, you know what I mean? Um, let me know if, if you guys have any um, scary phobias, uh, if you've ever heard it, heard, seen the Silent Hill scene with the janitor in the bathroom, or if you've heard of this story before, and if that traumatizes you from using the bathroom, like the, the public school bathroom. <laughs> Um, I've gotten better with it over the years, but man, when I first heard that story, I was like petrified, absolutely scared. Okay. Um, anyway, I've been rambling on too much. Let's read what, uh, what this post is. So this website is called The Ghost in My Machine, and I think they post a lot of information about different urban legends and scary spooky stuff. So yeah, I'll link this website in the description as well as this particular page on Akamanto. So, Encyclopedia of the Impossible, Akamanto. Uh, let's see. So, type CC, corporally challenged. <laughs> Is that supposed to mean that they're kind of dumb? <laughs> corporally challenged? Period, location of origin. It is generally accepted that subject, known as Akamanto, or the Red Cloak, first appeared in the 1930s in Japan. However, both the time frame and the precise region of origin are not fixed. Numerous theories exist that shift the time frame, speci specify differing regions, or both. It is unknown which, if any, of these origin stories is true. So, we do know that Akamanto uh, came up in the 1930s, but we're not sure what part of Japan it's from, so it must be a shared urban legend. Uh, appearance. Subject appears to be a tall humanoid figure clad in a red cape or cloak. It is frequently hooded, as well as typically masked. Due to this mask, the subject's face is presented to targets not as a human face, but as an expressionless white blank. According to some reports, beneath the mask lies a handsome, characteristically male face, but there is no consensus as to whether this is actually the case. Uh, I feel like if he was if the ghost was handsome, he wouldn't be hiding his face. You know, normally, 
these urban legends don't have uh, the, the most beautiful appearance, which is why they cover their face with a mask. Uh, here's a photo of a dilapidated bathroom. It looks abandoned. I would not want to use this bathroom. Oh my gosh. Subject habitually occupies public restrooms, although the nature of the restroom varies by report. Sometimes the restroom is specifically a school restroom. Sometimes it is especially a rundown restroom, the condition of which sets it apart from other restrooms in the vicinity, particularly in the event that the restroom is also a school restroom. And sometimes subject is set to occupy a particular stall, the last one in the row. Yeah, so in the Silent Hill janitor scene, the janitor was in the last uh, last stall of the bath of the school bathroom. So like it really built up the tension because the, the heroine was walking and opening each door slowly and there was nothing there but the bathroom was gross and old and then BAM! The dead janitor was in there. Uh, but yeah, so I, not only school bathrooms, I was petrified of public restrooms in general with stalls, the so like store bathrooms that have stalls or whatever. Um, scared, absolutely scared for a while. Um, Especially, my school bathrooms were really old, so like, the paint was always chipping and there was just graffiti and everything, so like, it was already really creepy and the lights sometimes flickered, it's like a yellowish hue, so it's just not the best place to um, feel comfortable staying in for a long time. So yeah, you'd always just go in, use, do your business, use the restroom and leave as quickly as you can. And then there's also like the Bloody Mary. Um, urban legend, which also has to do with bathrooms and mirrors, and so I do not, I do not mess with bathrooms, okay? The bathroom is one of the scariest places in the house, besides the attic and the basement, okay? The bathroom, you wouldn't think so, but the bathroom is a dangerous, scary place for ghosts and monsters. Okay. Um, all or any of, any or all of these details may change at any moment. Modus operandi. Subject lies in wait until a target presents presents themselves. So I guess they're 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 telling it in the in the point of view of the Akamanto. Subject lies in wait until a target presents themselves. Should target enter subject's restroom, enter a stall, do their business, and find upon completion that there's no toilet paper in the stall. Subject will then make itself known vocally. Subject will ask target red paper or blue paper. No, Target would not necessarily know where the owner of this mysterious voice is positioned relative to themselves. They could be outside the door, they could be in the next stall over, either to the right or left, or their directionality may simply not be possible to discern. So it's like an echoing voice. They don't necessarily show their face right away, the monster. One of the following will then occur, depending on the target's choice. Okay. Option 1. Should the target ask for red paper? They will immediately be sliced to bits, as if they had been attacked with a knife or other sharp object, and will subsequently expire. Their body later will be found within the stall, covered in lacerations, soaked in blood, and occasionally flayed. Ooh, so red for blood, huh? Oh, okay, mm. Option two, should Target ask for blue paper? Every ounce of blood will immediately be drained from their body, from their body leading to their subsequent expiration. Their body will later be found within the stall, bloodless, cold, and blue. So, either you're, you're bled out with the red paper, or you're sucked dry like a vampire sucking their victim's blood dry, and you're blue in the face if you choose the blue paper. So there's really no winning, right? You can't choose either option. If you choose red or blue, you'll die either way. Some accounts report slight variations in subject's reaction to target's choice. For instance, should target ask for blue paper, it is possible that, rather than drain the target's blood from their body, the subject will instead strangle or otherwise asphyxiate the target. The result, however, is essentially the same. The target will later be found within the stall, dead and blue. So, um, pretty much a stabbing or suffocation. Oh gosh, what a terrible way to go. Other possible reactions subject may have to target's choice include allowing the target to survive, but permanently dyeing their skin the color of the paper they chose. Oh, I have never heard that before. Allowing the target to escape, but later causing them to fall ill and die. Oof. Touching or licking target. Ew. Or dragging target to the underworld, frequently through the restroom's plumbing. Oh my gosh, these are all terrible options. There's no, there's no good ending. Um... I mean, I guess the the least bad would probably be having your skin permanently dyed the color of the paper they chose because that's just like a, a physical, external characteristic. Um, 
it that I mean if it's just the color of your skin being dyed I mean as long as the dye isn't harmful then that's relatively safe right it's just embarrassing and awkward but man you don't want to be licked by this monster ill or being dragged to the underworld via toilet flushing that's like oh that's so gross that's a terrible way to go subject may also present target with slightly different choices according to reports variations include red paper or white paper and red paper or purple paper whether subject is directly responsible for the stall chosen by target being out of paper in the first place has not been determined oh i've never heard of the white paper or purple paper options i've only heard the red and blue ones let's see containment subject is notoriously difficult to contain the following suggested methods have been found to be ineffectual as evidenced by Target's failure to survive an encounter with subject after deploying them. <gasps> okay, asking for a different color paper. Yeah, so what if you ask for something besides red or blue? Should Target's ask subject for a color of paper not specified in the original question, the subject will still react in such a way as to cause the Target's death. For example, should Target ask for yellow paper, subject will force Target's head into the toilet bowl, causing them to drown. <gasps> Bringing additional paper. Should Target bring a roll of paper with them into the restroom, they will find it to have vanished mysteriously by the time they need it. That is, they will be presented with a situation in which they have no paper and must respond to the subject's question, whether they like it or not. So Akamata will steal your toilet paper in order to, to ask you to choose one, even if you have your own paper. Damn, this guy is really determined. Oh, wow. Okay, it is not recommended that these failed methods be deployed. Further research into them is not necessary. So, pretty much they're saying, don't try this at home, kids. According to some reports, the following methods may prove effectual against subject. <sighs> There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Let's see. What is our... What, what can we do? Asking for a purple paper. Ooh, okay. In instances where subject has demanded target choose between red and purple paper, choosing purple paper will result in subject allowing target to escape unharmed. <sighs> Use only when asked to choose between red and purple paper. Asking for purple paper when required to choose between red and either white or blue paper will be treated in the manner described under asking for a different colored paper above. So if you're really lucky to have the red-purple option, choose purple. Okay. Asking for no paper. In some cases, stating that one has no need for any paper may confuse or distract the subject long enough to allow the target to escape. However, there exists the possibility that the subject will recover before Target is able to ex exit the bathroom, or that the subject will simply block the door and prevent the Target from escaping in the first place. Use with caution. Oh, so asking for no paper will confuse them, but you gotta be real slick, real quick on your feet if you wanna try to escape while they're um, confused. The only fail-safe way to avoid encountering subject is simply never to enter a restroom known to harbor the subject in the first place. <laughs> I mean, but like, if you gotta go, you gotta go, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, nature waits for no one. Additional notes. Tracing accounts and stories of subject throughout the 20 and 21st centuries reveal that the subject's MO has changed considerably over time. Reports of subject may be traced to the 1930s, Although at the time, subject did not occupy and ensnare targets in public restrooms, but rather existed as a sort of boogeyman figure dressed in a red cloak who kidnapped children. So this is one of those uh, kid snatchers. Uh, these, this story is probably used like um, to scare kids, I guess not to be troublemakers, right? A lot of monsters have that kind of origin, scare, uh, meant to like scare kids. It has been proposed that an alleged, that an allegedly solved murder. Algedo no Satsujinjiken may have something to do with subject's rise to attention. On February 11, 1906, in what is now Sakai City, Fuk Fukui, Fukui Prefecture, a man in his mid-30s wearing a blue blanket allegedly lured several people away from their home and the store they operated with a story about a sick family member, then reportedly murdered them. There is no definitive proof that this alleged case, which may itself be a rumor, the record is hazy contributed directly to the subject's rise, but the similarities between its details and subject's earliest MO are enough to raise a few eyebrows. Notably, it's a nod to an infrequently referenced variation on subject's name, Aoi Manto, or Blue Cloak. Yeah, so why is it called Red Cloak if they ask for red or blue paper? Um, it should be like, I don't know, dual, dual toned or something. Uh, stories have also circulated in which the subject itself is absent, 
but in which such as ML may be observed. These stories, which date to the 1950s, are set up similarly. A target enters a public restroom, shuts themselves in a stall, and finds themselves needing to answer a question about the color of paper, and include almost identical denouements. Target dies horribly in a manner dictated by their choice. However, rather than being actively attacked by a figure in a red cloak, targets find their wounds simply appearing. There is no mention of subject itself, only the actions later ascribed to the subject. These stories are referred to not by the subject's modern name, but as Akai Kami, Oi Kami, or Red Paper, Blue Paper. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But how would the question be answered if there's no voice um, asking them? Is it written on, like, the bathroom stall or the bathroom wall? That- I don't know which is worse. What do you think is worse? Having, like, the monster directly ask you to choose? Or seeing the word- seeing the words on the wall and asking you to choose? <coughs> Sorry. Um, I feel like at least if there's a monster, then you know that you're in danger and you have to make your decision wisely. But if you're in the bathroom and you just see words on the wall or there's just options of toilet paper, red and blue, but no one actually talking, and giving you the choice, then you might just be like, uh, eh, whatever, either or is fine, and then be unsuspecting and then die. You know? So I don't know which is worse. Guys, what do you think what do you think is worse? Having the monster uh ask you to choose red or blue, or to just have the option in front of you without context, and then like you're on your own, you know? Oh, they're both really terrible options. Okay, it is therefore possible that subject's current form is a hybrid of these two previous forms, the, ch the child snatching boogeyman and the phantom Akai Kami, Al Kami story. Whether subject knows of or is related to previous subjects, Kanako-san or Kashima Reiko has not been determined. Recommendation, if there's a r rumor about a particular restroom at your school, don't use it, ever. <laughs> Oh yeah, um, in terms of other bathroom ghosts, I, I do know of the Hanako, Hanako-san, well actually Hanako-kun because I've seen the uh, Toilet Band Hanako-kun anime, <laughs> uh, but he's not like an evil ghost, I guess he's like the, like the, like a rendition and he's like really cute and helpful, Hanako-kun, um, but yeah, if there's a rumor about your bathroom, don't tempt fate and try it out. You don't want to end up seeing the Silent Hill janitor and be chased by him through the school or to meet the Akamanto, Akamanto okay? Don't try it. It's not worth it. And, and, and in, in any case, you'll just end up having nightmares even if nothing actually happens. You'll just spook yourself out, you know? Okay, um, resources Akamanto at yokai.com and here are some, I guess, resources they use to put it together. That was really interesting. I really appreciate the way they wrote it. Um, to kind of, they wrote it from the perspective of the Akamanto. Akamanto, I'm so sorry, my pronunciation. Um, and they, they kind of gave us some ways of how you could avoid. So again, to recap, if you choose red, you will be slashed to death. If you choose blue, you'll be asphyxiated. Um, if you choose another color not offered, you'll be drowned. Um, other variations is being pulled into the toilet. Um, and flush down the drain, or um, having having the uh, sickness appear on you unexpectedly. Um, if they're if you're offered red versus purple, choose purple, and they might spare you. Um, if you're offered, uh, if you say uh, none, like no paper, it'll confuse the ghost, and you can have a split he second head start on escaping, but you have to be really fast. Um, so again, the, the surefire way of avoiding the wrath of the Akamanto is to not check out your school's urban legends. Don't go to the bathroom and test this out. Okay, please, I warn you. I was so scared to use the public restroom after hearing this story for so long. You don't, you don't want to go through it. It's traumatic, okay? Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed me just reading this information about the Akamanto to learn more about it with me. I already knew a little bit about it because, um, again, my friend told me about the legend a long time ago, but this one just kind of details it more and clarifies some things that I was blurry in my memory. Oh, maybe we could find a picture of it too. They don't have a picture of the Akamanto. Let's see. Um, let's see. Actually, it says yokai.com. Let's see. Do they have, um, 
let me zoom in. Can I zoom in? You see this? Ooh. He's so pale. I mean, he's just wearing like a red scarf, red coat, red hat. But like, ooh, they're holding a knife. Ooh. That doesn't look like a mask though. Here, let me... Can I zoom in more? That don't look like a mask. Ugh. Oh gosh. Okay, um... Since we're here, shall I read... Oh, so big. <laughs> Since we're here, shall I read, um... The Yoko.com explanation? I could do that, right? Let me actually fix... Fix the, the sizing of this so that you can see this a lot better. Alternate names: Ao Manto, Akai Kami, Akai Han Ken, Akai Chan Changko, Akai Ken. Habitats: School toilets. Diet is unknown. Yeah, I don't know if they eat the kids. They just kill them, right? Or they supposedly just um, target school bathrooms. But I guess if you're an adult, like a faculty member using the bathroom, you'll probably be in danger as well. Appearance: The Akamanto is an urban legend related to toilets, particularly those in elementary school bathrooms. This phenomenon is known all over Japan with countless variations on the same theme. It usually takes place in a specific stall in a specific bathroom within the school. So in this case, it's very specific, a specific location. Do not go there. Usually it is an older or seldom used bathroom, often in a stall with an older style squat toilet. Oh, this is new. Often the fourth stall is the cursed one, as the number four is associated with death. Yeah, so older style squat toilet. The other website did not mention that. Um, a lot of schools, I, I guess maybe a lot of the modern schools would not have the squat toilet anymore. It'd be the, the, the one with the, the, the throne, is that what it's called? The, the seat, the seat, you know? Um, so I guess you don't have to worry about that if it only holds squat toilets, right? Um, and the fourth stall, and because the number four is associated with death. Yeah, in uh, Japanese, Chinese, um, maybe Korean culture as well, the number four sounds like death. So, um... And in other Asian Asian countries as well, Asian cultures, uh, the number four sounds like death. So, understandable, four is an unlucky number. Okay, uh, most stories follow this general pattern. While at school late in the evening, a student suddenly finds himself or herself in desperate need of a toilet. The closest restroom available is one that is normally avoided by the students. It is older and less well kept, separated from the rest of the school, and is rumored to be haunted. But with no time to search for a different restroom, the student enters. He or she does their business, and when they have finished, they reach for the toilet paper, only to find there is none. Then they hear a strange voice. Do you want red paper or blue paper? The student answers, red paper, and a moment later is stabbed and sliced up so violently that blood sprays everywhere, soaking their body and making it look as if they were wearing a bright red cloak. Sometime later, another student finds him or herself in need of a toilet in a similar situation. They know the rumors that a student died in the restroom, but they have no choice and use the bathroom anyway. Sure enough, a voice asks them, red paper or blue paper? Remembering the legend, this student says, blue paper. Then, all of the student's blood is sucked out of their body, leaving them dead and blue faced on the floor. Oh dear. Plenty of variations of this legend exist, each with minor differences. The true identity of Akai Manto, Akamanto, is one of these. Sometimes it is said to be a person hiding in the adjacent stall, a serial killer in many stories. Ooh. Other times it is a ghost who appears as a tall man with a sickly bluish white face. So in this story, he ain't handsome. In some places, it is even blamed on a hairy yokai called a Kainade who lives in the toilet and likes to stroke people's rear ends with his hand. Ew, hentai! In the Kainade's curse, in the Kainade's case, the end result is markedly less violent. A hairy arm of the chosen color rises out of the toilet to stroke the students behind. That's just a pervert! In some cases, instead of draining your blood, blue paper gets you strangled until your face turns blue. Sometimes, answering red paper gets your skin flayed so that it hangs off of you, hangs off of your back like a red cape. A play on the Akamanto name. Ew, oh my gosh, that's so brutal. In other versions, instead of being killed, the student's skin color will change permanently to whatever color he or she chose. Sometimes, those who survive and tell the story to others fall terribly ill and die shortly after. 
and sometimes the consequences are worse than death, such as being dragged into the netherworld, never to be seen again. The questions have many variations as well, including red vest or blue vest, red hand or blue hand, or red tongue or blue tongue. Sometimes the colors are red or white instead of blue. When the choices are red or white paper, red often results in a red tongue rising out of the to up out of the toilet to lick the student's rear end, while white results in a white hand rising up to stroke the student's rear end. <sighs> Hentai yokai! Less common choices are red paper or purple paper. Choosing purple allows the student to escape unharmed, while choosing red causes the student to be pulled down through the toilet into the plumbing. Oh, man. Into the underworld. As, many, or as with many urban legends, there is usually no escape from your horrible fate, though that doesn't stop people from trying. Clever students who bring extra toilet paper with them discover that it vanishes before they are able to use it, and still find themselves having to answer to Akamanto. People who choose a different color other than those offered in hopes, of con in hopes to confuse the spirit are met with an equally horrible death. One common version has a student say yellow paper, and the result is that their face is pushed down into the dirty toilet water and held there until they drown drown in their own pee. In some instances, students have been able to escape by saying, I don't need any paper, buying them just enough time to run out of the bathroom before anything happens. Origin. Origin. Tracing the origin of urban legends can be difficult. Akamanto is fairly old as far as urban legends go. It is recorded as a popular schoolyard rumor as early as the 1930s, and its popularity hasn't faded even as newer toilet legends, such as Toiren no Hanako-san Hanako-kun, has come into existence. One explanation for Akamanto's origin and continued popularity is, is, is in its nature. It may be a reflection of the anxiety inherent in being a student. Akamanto asks children an impossible question to which, an an to which any answer results in something terrible. That feeling is not too different from having to answer a difficult problem on a test, or a teacher's question in front of the whole classroom when you don't know the answer. Akamanto's appearance has changed over time along with the Japanese lexicon. Today, Manto is the Japanese word for a cloak or a cape, and so Akamanto is usually depicted wearing a long red, red hooded cloak. However, in the 1930s, when this urban legend was born, Manto referred to a shorter sleeveless kimono jacket. As a result, different generations have different visual impressions of what Akamanto looks like. I see. Oh, so reading this was nice also. It kind of added and fleshed in more of what the other, other site had said. So yeah, um, moral of the story? Uh, do not go to the school public restroom late at night. Do not go to the fourth stall or the, the stall that your school may claim to be haunted. Don't do it. And if you have to really use the bathroom and you find yourself in the situation, say that you do not need any paper and then run. Okay? Just run. <laughs> okay, so, um... Thanks for coming along on my, uh, on my researching on, well, not really researching, but on my read up of the Akamanto legend. Um, it was really interesting to kind of fill in the blanks for me because I didn't know generally the story, uh, again, from a friend, but I didn't know all the specifics and specifically how to avoid being killed by the Akamanto. So it's nice to know, um, what to say if you are in this situation. <laughs> okay, um, so what did you think of this urban legend? Have you heard of this before? Do you know of any other similar ones? Uh, maybe from other cultures? Um, and would you be interested in hearing, uh, in me covering some more other urban legends? Yeah, Japanese urban legends or non-Japanese, doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for spending time with me during Spooky Month. Bye-bye!